if you are passing through one or two things, I would like you to be very attentive to today's teaching, for it will be of help and it will be of strength to you. Um, there are different forms of knowledge that must be in operation at different points in time. And we do not belong to a kingdom that is just function in power, but not in knowledge. As a matter of fact, we do not belong to a kingdom that power is the only thing that is functional in that kingdom. We belong to the kingdom where we also function um, through knowledge. So when you sing that song, nothing is impossible with him. For with God all things are possible. What the scripture is saying is that there is a dimension of knowledge through which you know that with God all things are worth. Someone said with God all things are possible. It's not a statement, it's a revelation. We will be able to separate uh, wheat from tears based on knowledge. Do you know there are things that look alike that it is knowledge that separate them. Uh, the, the man that planted wheat and then suddenly found tears among the wheat said, an enemy had done this. So, to recognize what the enemy has done, it requires an expression of knowledge. You see, an enemy had done this. Okay, so I will take you through a teaching very essential for you. <laughs> for this time, we are going through it's a very crazy time when things look alike. But not let separate things that looks almost the same thing. All right, Psalm one thirty nine. Let's read Psalm one thirty nine, and I'll, I pray the Spirit of God will help me, because at times when you you can have an encounter with God, but to communicate the encounter becomes difficult, and once an encounter is difficult to communicate, it it won't become an heritage for them. So, most of our fathers are very spiritual, but they cannot communicate their experience. Therefore, they can't put it into knowledge form. And because it's not in knowledge form, it cannot just be impacted. It can be revealed, explained to us. The things of the kingdom needs explanations. An explanation can only come through the anointing to explain details of what the Father has installed for us. Oh Lord, Thou hast searched me and worth. Alright? So that type of knowledge is not within human frame. The kind of knowledge God has towards us is not the kind of knowledge you have towards your child. He said, Thou knowest my down sitting and my uprising. Thou understandest my thought. Afar off. That is, before I project the thoughts, I have the understanding of what we are about to say next. Such knowledge is not existing within human nature. Hallelujah. Alright, verse 3. Thou compassed my path, my line thou art acquainted with all my ways. Verse 4. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it altogether. That is, God can actually fabricate all your thoughts together and put them in a sentence even when you are not speaking all right so in verse five thou hast beset me behind and before you laid thy hand upon me that the bible says in verse six such knowledge is too wonderful for me it is high i cannot attain unto it that was what david said hallelujah so Ephesians chapter 1, 16 to 17. I'm showing you the progressiveness of this knowledge because in the Old Testament it couldn't be handed over to them. David testified it is too high. I can't attend them. Alright. Now, let's read from verse 15. Um, because, you know, we are still dealing with the revelation of the New Testament. Hallelujah. Why New Testament is different from the Old Testament. Okay. Um, Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus 
and love unto all saints. Verse 16. Cease not to give thanks for you, making mentions of you in my prayers. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory. Now, let me firstly explain this. I, I don't need to digress. Holy Spirit, help me to coordinate the revelation you've given me. Is it such knowledge is too wonderful for me? It is I, I can't attain it. It's true. That was the reason why David can't attain such knowledge because there was a veil. There was a limit to what you can know in the Old Testament. Do you hear me? A limit to what you can what? There was a, there was a limit to what you can know, what you can understand what you can perceive because the veil covers their hearts but when when a man becomes born again the bible said the veil is what is taken away because the reading of the old testament is done with and now it is not of letter but of the spirit for the letter kills but the spirit impacts life the spirit gives life to the reading that's what he's saying the spirit gives what life it is the spirit that gives life to what you are reading Okay, so it is very important for us to know that we cannot function properly in this kingdom without knowledge. I'll begin to say this. This knowledge we talk about, hallelujah, the most important aspect of all forms of knowledge is the knowledge that reveal is what? His will. We call it the knowledge of his will. The communication that gives you understanding of what the will of God is. Do we understand that? We call it the knowledge of his will. So basically we have one, knowledge that is impacted by nature. Knowledge that is what? Alright. That was the knowledge of the tree of good and what? And evil. We call it dual knowledge. From the day you eat from the tree that produces good and evil, you shall what? Die. That word death simply means you will operate in a lower dimension from the original standard you were, you were creating. So this knowledge came into existence because Adam and Eve fell from the highest expressions of knowledge. Are you following what I'm saying? A little later? They were not... God didn't want them to know good or what. They must be in a perfect state, which is the, the knowing of God. The knowing of God is revelation knowledge. Hallelujah. But now that they fell, knowledge was impacted to them, which is what? The knowledge that is impacted to them through the falling nature. We call it the knowledge of sin. What do we call it? Yes, the knowledge of sin. The knowledge of sin came in. Ah, God came into the garden and he said, We heard your voice, we're afraid because we saw our we we, we we found that we were what naked. There was a knowledge impacted when they fell. It was the knowledge of imperfection, knowledge of sinful nature, knowledge of corruption. This is the knowledge that brings corruption to the world. That knowledge is also existence. Hallelujah. Uh, a guy, a lady, a young guy just still still meet from the pot, and the mother is coming and hide the meat. And the mother said, What are you hiding? He said, Nothing. I said, Let me see your hand. It was an impartation. The knowledge came in the order of a fallen nature. And everybody must have it before you're born again. And even if you are born again, that knowledge can just struggle to reign. If you let him reign. Hallelujah. So we have this. Then there is what we call a knowledge, is a form of knowledge. We call it assumption. What do we call it? Assumption is a form of learning that is not coherent to God. You just come and is is a state of is a is a class of knowledge that destroys. That was 
and Satan said, I will make my throne to be above the throne of God. Uh, to tell you that according to that Bible, Satan had a throne, amen? Whether they be throne or principalities or power, things were made by him and for him. So, absorption is a form of knowledge that is not within the context. That is not what? Okay, let's practice that. Peculi, how are you? Good morning. Said, Look at that lady. She's not greeting me well. She's insulting me. It's an assumption. You have no proof. And it is a knowledge without proof. Amen? And then it is always a knowledge that brings misinterpretation. Uh, God can... God can say, Awe yali, awe yali, awe yali. And he said, God has called you. <laughs> he says, Awe yali, awe yali, awe yali. I just want to discuss your wife with you. Ah, I didn't know. I thought once you call me like Samuel, I've had your call. Amen. Now, assumption will perpetually keep you in the realm of confusion without proof. Okay? Now, the third one is education. Somebody's education. It is a knowledge that train your mind. Because we are born with a mind that is empty. Father Abraham, when you were born, your mind was totally empty. Your mind was configured through environment and training you received. No, nobody had anything in his mind. Even though your spirit comes with destiny, but your mind is empty. My spirit comes with what? But my mind is worth. So, if faith gave birth to a child, and faith is living in India, and then the name of faith's child is Tunji. Tunji will speak Indian language, but it's from Yoruba land. That knowledge is impacted because she lives in that environment. It's an education. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remember Zion. For they said, We shall sing our Lord's son. In what? It was an education. Daniel was not his name, Belshazzar. But he was given that name so that he can comply with instructions in Babylon. Maybe we don't understand that education is a form of knowledge that impacts your soul. In fact, it's a body of knowledge impacting your soul. So, this knowledge will train your mind. You can be gifted and has no home training. It will show your ministry. Because those who are older than you, they will have to prostrate without feeling anything. You can ask the professor to be your driver. Amen. Praise God. Without respect. So, Moses went through this. Paul went through it. For Peter, it was education called fishery. Because this knowledge is also important to train your mind. If you see somebody who is not educated and somebody who is educated and both of them are running ministry, what is lacking is not anointing, it's education. What is lacking? Because their mind can be coordinated to a certain extent. Hallelujah. Alright, now we have what we call biblical knowledge. What do we call it? The biblical knowledge simply means the knowledge of the Bible, which a professor can have. <laughs> biblical knowledge. You know, I'm going to start a university of theology soon. Hello. Uh, so, biblical theology, biblical knowledge. Some of us don't have it. If you go to school and you do CRK, and they tell you from Jopal to Capernaum is 150 miles. You say, wow. Wow. You see that between Jordan and the Dead Sea, that was where Jesus, the wilderness where Jesus went to was between the Jordan and, uh, and then you find out and say, spend 15. Then they start giving you accurate information, the biblical knowledge. Do you understand what I'm saying? This cannot be acquired 
by the Holy Ghost is by study. Is by what? If you don't study, <laughs> you'll just be sharing some things with us. And then we will not have a biblical fact about what you are teaching. That's one of the problems I have with this generation of young ministers. They just present powerful revelation knowledge, but what they are saying is actually contrary. The right information. So a basic knowledge, the theological knowledge is important to upgrade you as a minister. Because illiteracy is very pompous. Amen. Hallelujah. So this knowledge comes by what? By study. By what? So study to show yourself unto God a workman that needed not to be ashamed rightly worth dividing the word of worth. Somebody say truth. What is truth? Light. What is truth? Instructions. What is truth? Reality. Hallelujah. Our spirit lives in light and our spirit is empowered by light because we have been translated out of the kingdom of darkness to his world. You are not hearing me. Say my spirit, the habitation of my born again spirit is what? It's light. Without light, I can't function. The entrance of his word, what does it give? So when the light enters your life, instruction, because there are components of truth. There is a lesser truth, there is a higher truth. Elementary, supplementary, and complementary are three components of truth. So let us leave the elementary doctrine and go to what? So this biblical knowledge is very important. But it's not all the knowledge we need. Then we move to what we call revelation what? Knowledge. Some say revelation knowledge. Revelation knowledge is the knowledge that is revealed in the word of God through the Holy Spirit. Behind every letter in your Bible, there is a hidden truth. That truth is hidden in the letter. So... Revelation knowledge is the knowledge that is revealed in the word of God basically through the Holy Ghost. If you can see it without the Holy Ghost, it's biblical knowledge, not revelation. <laughs> For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten so whoever believes in him should not perish but have one. So if you want to give your life to Jesus, come out. Will anybody respond? Have you seen anybody that is one? You stand and you say, let me show you. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten so whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now, if you want to give your life to Jesus, can you come up? Will they respond? No, they, they don't respond to that verse. They respond to light. But that verse contains light that the Holy Ghost must unveil. So each verse contains truth that sets free. I'll give you an example. And the Lord God has prepared a great fish to swallow who? Jonah. I eat fish. Can fish eat me? What has God prepared for me this season to swallow me? To take over my circumstances? Something big. You understand? So you will stop seeing fish. You start seeing people. You start seeing vessel. You start seeing places. That truth is hidden where? In scripture. Why is it hidden in scripture? Because all scripture is written by what? So it takes inspiration to interpret inspiration. Revelation knowledge is also the higher form of God's knowledge that is not sense ruled but spirit ruled. It is not sense rule. Biblical knowledge is sense rule to its an extent. And Melchizedek gave a tithe to who? To Abraham. Are you hearing me? That is biblical knowledge. But the revelation knowledge said, and Melchizedek blessed Abraham. Are you hearing me? Then Abraham gave tithe. So what is the revelation knowledge? We are blessed before we tithe. Because Abraham had been blessed by Melchizedek, then Melchizedek responded by giving what? So it is not that tithe that blesses. The tithe is a response to the blessing I already have. That is not biblical. That is revelation. So when you see a professor 
in a university that is be, that has this knowledge in the depth of his sense, he can still drink beer. He can tell you Jesus turned water to what? To wine. And if you are following that, you are going to be in trouble. Because there are plenty of water you will turn to wine yourself. So people have issues when they don't move from the biblical knowledge to what? To revel- Religious will be locking around biblical knowledge without revelation. It will not suffer my foot to be what? Can simply means your leg must not be amputated. Because the problem we are going to have is we will be trapped in the cultural knowledge. There are sometimes the cultural knowledge and revelation knowledge are in conflict. If you are going to your customer's place to go and ask for the money she owes you and then over secular matter, the cultural knowledge will tell you you can't get the money. Yes or no? That's a cultural knowledge. It's a knowledge impacted through culture. But revelation only can take over. Which can give you boldness to go. So if we don't go beyond all this limitation, we will not be a sound Christian. The problem we are having these days is that many of our people who are supposed to be a good teacher of the Bible, they are becoming orator. And why are they becoming orator? Because they are not patient with scripture to produce revelation. Somebody can talk for 45 minutes without referring to the Bible. And you are clapping. He's going. Is dying on you say right now because the father you are to reference uh, the father you are from scripture as a point of reference the more deeper you will be in error revelation knowledge is the working knowledge that results to truth it's not just knowledge is working knowledge somebody say working knowledge yes it's not just knowledge <laughs> the difference between biblical knowledge and revelation knowledge is that biblical knowledge has been stated it's a stated knowledge why revelation knowledge is working w-o-r-k is a working knowledge glory be to jesus honor your father and your mother so shall you live long is a biblical knowledge what is the working behind it give them two two thousand every two two weeks Three three thousand every three three weeks is a knowledge that involves work. So if you are not working it out, you won't arrive at the place of truth. Glory be to Jesus. This is the kind of knowledge that David was complaining. He said, "This knowledge is too what is too high." What we call truth, it is the result of working knowledge. Is the result of what? And somebody just say, "The Bible is truth." Yes. But before you arrive at the truth the Bible says about, there must be a working knowledge. Because there is a difference between what God is saying to me and what God is saying to us. So what God is saying to us is doctrinal knowledge. What God is saying to me is revelation knowledge. Do you understand what I'm saying? So what he's saying to us is doctrinal. What he's saying to me it's revelation, which is a personal knowledge based on divine experiences. So I can see Jesus with brown hair in my vision. And your own is white. As wool. Shage, black. Abul Waje is a light blue. The same Jesus, but with different what? Because there are differences in our personal revelation... It cannot be agreed as a doctrine. Do you understand what I'm saying? If you preach that, you are going to be in error. So Paul the Apostle said, When I was caught up into heaven, I had unspeakable tongues which are not lawful for men to communicate. There are some things you don't share with brethren. You have destroyed them. You have opened them to portals that is not relevant to destiny. Because it's a celestial realm that is governed by different laws. Amen. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. Such knowledge is too wonderful. Such knowledge contains wonder. It is high. I cannot attain unto it. 
Oh, glory be to Jesus. But thanks be unto God, we've been given that access. Because what eyes have not seen, what ears have not heard, what has not entered into the heart of men, as the Lord prepared for them that loved him. There is a difference between what God prepared for those he loves and what he prepared for those that love him. The two are not the same. He prepares the same thing for those he loves. He prepared different things for those that love him. So our degree of love is different because it makes demands on God to respond in different measures. You can't be praying for 30 hours, somebody's praying for 2 hours. And you are defining grace as the same capacity. It's not. <laughs> you are wasting time. It's not. What God will do, you will do. If you pray 2 hours, somebody will put 20 minutes every day. You, know, you, you, you have the same God, but you, you don't carry the same measure of that same God. So whither shall I go from your spirit? Or whither shall I flee from your presence? Verse 8. If I ascend up into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in what? You are what? Now that word hell simply means if I make my bed in places that does not look like your presence, even your presence is there. So even if I am in a place where I feel God is not there, he is what? You don't mistake in silence of God and God's absence. They are not the same thing. Okay, that's another revelation. So if I take the wings of the morning, so morning has wings, and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall your hand, what? So he has hand. And your right hand shall what? The two are not the same. There is a leading hand, there is a holding hand. Somebody's not hearing me. Someone said there is a leading hand. There is one hand that leads you. But when it comes to his right hand, he holds you firm. So the hand of God can make you steady in doing something for 20 years. And you are not tired doing it. Hello? My mother has been sending you for the past 50 years. Something hold her. You know, within 50 years, somebody can do like 150 jobs. How many of you know? That are just changing jobs like I changing clothes. Because the hand is not sustained, it's not holding. He said, right there, your hand, may the hand of God hold you. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even me said that, even the night shall be light. So such knowledge is too what? Sir, you don't need to travel to heaven before you know what happens around the truth. They call it revelation knowledge. What do we call it? Capacity. The knowledge of his will. I don't need to go to heaven. Because the Bible also says, you don't even need to ascend there. He said the word is near thee. Even in your mouth, the word of faith, which will speak. So when you stand like this, and God is saying, what I'm thinking about Toby right now is that I'm going to bless him. And immediately the same thing God says is what you say. God is blessing you. The devil in your father's house will be looking at you. There, there is a connector. That, that knowledge is too high. Because somebody just threatened you to pay the money you are owing him. But there is something that comes out of your mouth. And exactly what the father is thinking. Are you ready for this knowledge? Now a branch of this knowledge. We call it foreknowledge. What do we call it? Now in, in another word. Knowledge beforehand. That is knowledge that is in existence. Before you exist. You see the spirit of religion is damaging us. There was a time we were singing. Um. I used to, which this song I used to sing when we were making jest in the house. Go, 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 
That song, the revelation is not unto another generation. You know, there is a revelation knowledge that endures from one generation to one. Especially when a revelation becomes heritage. It has to pass from one generation to another. But there are some of these revelations we share this day that Kodori Facebook, it is obsolete the following day while because it's manna. It must not stay for two days. It doesn't go through cycle of life. It, anything that has no seed has corruption. Manna has no seed. And anything that has no seed will corrupt. So therefore God asks them, take the angel's food and eat. But gather what you need for a day. For Sabbath, gather for two days. If you gather for two days, you need to gather for a day, you'll see maggots. It becomes maggot. So it is a kind of knowledge that cannot pass to another generation because it's corrupt, it's self-made. Before you can stand and minister, and minister pure truth, there are three components that must be important. There must be salvation, sanctification, and then a very strong addiction to God's word. Those things will inform your trance. A mind that is not sanctified will produce corrupt messages. If somebody is having concubine, will you preach against that? So you have a way of dodging that principle. Out of five principles that destroy destiny, you will dodge adultery because you are a victim of it. This generation is consuming destruction fast and call it revelation knowledge. For whom he did for no. He also did predestine. I've done a teaching here, yes or no? The difference between foreknowledge and what? Predestination. And foreknowledge simply means the knowledge God has about you in the spirit form. In what? That was the knowledge he said before I formed thee, I was. How will you know somebody before he's formed? There is this knowledge that precedes formation. So go to the me, bro, you the Lord in my way, you do way wrong, get low, fellow fit here. <laughs> you know, your wife is boom, 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 boom. and that drive you need it because by the time you say you want to confirm or something, say, Oh, God, let's go and pay for the land, the property there. Every day you are confirming because if she wait before you confirm, another person will buy the property. So, so therefore, God knows you before you were formed. That kind of knowledge, it is the knowledge in the spirit form. His name shall be called Jesus. He shall save his people from what? Such knowledge only exists in the spirit. So it takes a man of the spirit to pick that knowledge. That boy is going to be a preacher. That knowledge is not from this room. It's a knowledge you pick. Why the baby is still in photos is a knowledge of destiny. So before I formed thee, I knew thee, I've appointed thee to be a prophet, and I've sanctified thee. One be I'm a tolo sanctify you should tell you. Oh, then Jesse gave a lot of money, amen. Glory be to Jesus. But there's anointed. To my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemy one. So who is your enemy? You put your head, your leg on the footstool to reach your goal. It takes revelation. That's revelation knowledge produces joy. Oh, le layo. Tori bokonto yoka isekini. It's not joy, but you arise beyond it. You look at yourself. You have five k in your pocket, and you have a project of five million. If you are not walking in revelation, hypertension will kill you. Then you see beyond. And you said, God is there. God is there. Someone say, God is there. Now, listen to this very important. Every truth in the scripture comes alive. In your born again spirit through revelation knowledge. Every truth in the scripture comes alive in your born again spirit through revelation knowledge. Every truth in the scripture comes alive in your born again spirit 
through what? Revelation knowledge. There is a branch of this revelation knowledge. Look at it. Revelation knowledge. There is a branch of this revelation knowledge which we call experiential. What do we call it? Yes, experiential knowledge. Is also a part of revelation knowledge. Revelation chapter 4 verse 1. And I had a voice that sounds like a trumpet and said to me, Come up hither, and I will show you things which must be here after. And immediately I found myself in the spirit, and I saw a door, and then a set throne. That knowledge is involved in the Bible, yes or no? Why? Because it's a branch of revelation knowledge, which is experiential. Hallelujah. So the experiential knowledge must be a function of revelation knowledge revelation knowledge must be able to be traced into biblical knowledge if we cannot find revelation knowledge within biblical knowledge is the spirit of heresy is an extraction just like a wine press extractions of juice out of the fruit is a crushing if you are going to bear the weight of god's glory you must be crushed your spirit must be crushed to produce that grape A wine can be sold for 100,000. How many of you know? And Ibu has his own wine. How many of you know that is Ibu wine? Some of the people that gave me wine in December. Sorry to say, some of you. You gave me Ibu wine. Abba wine. Wine with cola. They will use cola and chlorine. Put it together. If you remove the bottle head and it has no pressure, it's not original. There are some times that if you have no pressure, nothing keeps you going. You are fake. Oh, fake. Hallelujah. Jesus conquered the world. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. It is in that place they sack you with a letter. Sack letter. I said, glory, glory. <laughs> Why do you change suddenly? Because a letter kill it. Letter does what? Well. But the spirit impact life. So let's look at this now. Revelation knowledge. Paul the apostle said to them, From the day I heard of your salvation, I begin to because this salvation becomes a fruitless thing without revelation. In, that the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ will grant unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Christ, the eyes of your understanding. If you pray like that every day, every day, every day, every day, you'll be a wise master. How many of you have married? How many, how, how many sisters have married here? You have a husband. Do you, have you ever gotten revelation of who a husband is? <laughs> do you know the meaning of husband? You know you are a husband. But do you have the revelation of a husband? Eh? The only thing in your marriage, some of you know is that wife, do what? Submit. Because it's written where? A husband do what? Love your wife. So every time you want to attack your wife, you say wife does what? Glory wrong. Amen. It's biblical, but without revelation, it's an abuse. Husband, love your wife is biblical knowledge. Yes or no? But without revelation, it's abuse. So, why some when must a wife submit somebody say at all times uh -huh, including when he's drunk and he say oh baby i feel like we should make love outside the compound and you see since the bible says submit at all times say, yes baby let's go outside why because that submission is error of omission. So, religion is destructive because the interpretation of scripture cannot be established without revelation. Every religion is an extreme emphasis of truth. Extreme emphasis of what? Jehovah's Witness. 
great message a canker when you find a believer that teaches too much on spirit you will enter spiritism someone like me God gives me authority to teach it even with the knowledge I have woman be alone I in that bank one can one things you can't establish in scripture somebody said a time of revival is coming when the revival comes instead of boarding airplane we will just do like this and we enter utopia money ha. revival <laughs> <laughs> if I need to go to Samfara, I will just say Samfara. Ah, Muni, hey, Reviver, Reviver, <laughs> Reviver. So now everybody praying for Reviver is praying for translocation. Ha, a retail buy. You know. When you go through scripture, with you come out with understanding. So therefore, the devil always wants you to play, uh, to fall into the hand of extreme interpretation because it's pleasurable to your soul. But revelation, not, that's why my I know my role in the body of Christ. I think I'm called to bring balance to some of this. And because some people say, there is, maybe reverend doesn't have manifestations and supernatural. Ah! I have supernatural. How many of you know I have supernatural? I don't need to be asking. Why, why am I asking that? Amen. Uh, amen, somebody. Glory be to Jesus. So I have supernatural, I have understanding. But you know that thing they do you. Glory be to Jesus. So, revelation knowledge is the injection of eternal truths that awakens your consciousness. What that simply means is that your soul is the institution of consciousness injection of truth that awakens your consciousness is revelation knowledge i know who i am someone say i know who i am so the question is that who are you who are you i'm faith faith what faith on oh, no, if you are standing before demons and the demon said who are you and you say you are faith he said you are fake because every knowledge you provide for demons is not knowledge with authority. But when the demons say, who are you? And you say, I'm born again. Child of God. Redeemed with incorruptible blood. Saved by grace. Empowered by the spirit. I am justified. I am sanctified by truth. Justified by grace. And glorified by hope. And as you begin to say that, the demons know you have come against him with eternal truth of who you are. This truth does not base on what you assume. It based on unchanging truth of God about you. If you sin, we have an advocate. That is how to tackle life. Let the poor say I'm worth. Don't let the poor say I'm poor. Why? Because in the covenant, he himself became poor. So that through his poverty, I am. If you are not walking in that, you are religion. You can be born again and be religion. You can be sinner and be religion. You can be born. If a religion that comes into existence after salvation is deadly. Why? Because they are walking natural life. God did not create natural life. Natural life came in existence as a replacement to supernatural life that Adam lost. And Jesus came to restore this life. So don't, there is nothing natural about Christianity. It's a supernatural birth. Ushers you into God's kingdom through what? The blood and water. Hallelujah. The birth of Jesus was not natural. The death was not natural. The conception was not natural. The ministry was not natural. The retor- so nothing is natural about Christianity. But every time you find a natural life in your Christian life, there is an absence of revelation knowledge in that place. Kapalasotalia. It is of more blessed to give than to want. Does that make sense? 
You have 10,000 naira. You are looking for a project of 1 million. God said, go and sow 10,000. Does that make sense? And that's why people like, uh, who is this guy fighting Titan? No, the Kerbidola is still born again. Yeah. Yeah? That's what the free that we can't understand. They cannot understand because sense rule people can't understand the eternal truth. And let me tell you, the teachings of giving carry some personal experience. Even though it's a doctrine. Because doctrine is the consistency of scripture on a subject. Do you remember? Yes, sir. Doctrine is the consistency of scripture on a particular subject. From Genesis to Revelation. Find it consistently in the scripture. Then it becomes what? A doctrine. You can't find a verse in the entire scripture and it becomes a doctrine. It's not possible. It must be consistent until it becomes a doctrine. Hallelujah. So the doctrine of Jesus is in the Bible. He shall, your seed and his seed, I will put enmity. He shall bruise your heel, you will bruise his head. That is the seed of the woman, not the seed of a man. So Jesus is not the seed of a man. Jesus is what? The seed of the woman, consistent. That is the doctrine. So you don't form doctrine on one appearance of angel. And then any an angel, you don't want to stand and sure, praise God. <laughs> Glory be to Jesus. <laughs> Amen. You know when some people come with all kinds of things. <laughs> I saw a picture on on um, on the Facebook several years, so maybe last year, and somebody said showed a picture of something that looks like octopus and said that's the cherubim. I said no, because. I've never, I've been to heaven twice, but apart from my personal experience, the scripture does not validate that. That's why we have different form of experiences. Some people can have experience through spiritism or through spirituality. Spirituality is ascending to the realm of God through the Holy Spirit. Spiritism is ascending into the realm of the Spirit through other spirit. So he that come after me, they were thieves and what? Robber, because there is a, there is a way somebody that is there is a path that leads to life i'm the way the truth and life so therefore spiritism is an entrance into the realities of the spirit in the absence of the holy ghost do you hear what i've just said holy ghost is the is the definition of spirituality so you can have biblical knowledge without being spiritual but holy ghost is the spirit of god that Bat us into experiential knowledge because Holy Ghost is the illustrations of the knowledge of God in experiential form. Without revelation, knowledge, scripture is not easy to understand. It's not what somebody was saying that from Genesis chapter 1 to Genesis chapter 4, and the Bible talks about Cain killed Abel, and then then they began they began to multiply. Where did where did Abel got women and all those stuff. They've forgotten that when Moses spent 40 days on the mountain, God just gave him a glimpse of what happened. That was not the total thing that happened in Genesis. God was just giving him important details of what was. That was not the complete things that happened. God was just showing him some important. It's just like you, you take somebody around all your property, important property, not the landed one, all the the built project and the properties you have and then you select few of them to show your friend that was exactly what god did to to moses god was selecting some important things that must be some documentary that must be kept and added into scripture for our own personal examples do we understand what i'm saying that was what god showed and within 40 days maybe if you have spent one and one thousand days with god you must have shown him the entire thing 40 days is not enough for god to show you everything the bible is do you understand what I'm saying? And somebody start asking stupid questions. Amen. I don't argue with foolish people. Praise God. Amen. Because they are going to drag your revelation knowledge into mud. Glory be to Jesus. Somebody's not speaking. Amen. Amen. Revelation knowledge is the terms and condition for applying scripture. <laughs> terms and what? For what? I know that one is sound very high. <laughs> 
where hyper teaching on grace comes from is an extreme emphasis on it somebody said you really want to know bible just focus on paul the apostle i said no it's wrong because the new testament is written was written paul was there peter wrote and then some one or two people also wrote and then god sent paul to the gentiles and he sent peter to who so even the teaching of the gentiles and the teaching of the jews is still applicable so i can use shaw to pray the god of the jews and i can pray without shaw the god of gentiles that makes a new testament so what's yes, i can go to jerusalem and hold the wailing wall and i pray by faith and god answers and i can decide to pray at the corner of my room is the same god if you restrict your god to pulling a piece to alone you are going to have issues so peter said even the gospel of our brother paul is difficult to what because he was not giving grace to understand that gospel so stay in the area where you have the understanding he's still in the new testament you know i'm not a baby i won't be preaching like a baby and say hallelujah glory <laughs> hallelujah glory we are redeemed we are redeemed somebody say redeemed <laughs> and somebody say uh -uh. Uh -uh. <laughs> uh -uh. that thing that is telling you why uh, is truth because now you are magnifying doctrine above truth and the voice of truth is in conscience Hallelujah. Jesus is coming back. Are you ready? Oh, we are ready. Is it? That is it. Ah. Let you, let you, you are like a now. And you are still counting. The voice of truth is applicable to your conscience. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus does not cancel truth. The Holy Ghost does not work for the word of God. He works with the word of God. Do you understand? Ah. Holy Ghost is not working for Bible, he's working with scripture because it's part of the Godhead. So we have an extreme emphasis on things. Paul says, Shall we continue in sin and say, Grace should abound? He said, God forbid. Then at the same time, he said, We are sin abound. Grace did much more. If you don't have revelation, one verse will do like this. While you are rejoicing in this verse, rejoice not. Reverse. And so people say it's like the Bible is very confusing. It's not. What you are lacking is revelation. Hallelujah. For God loveth a cheerful, but it's of more blessed to give than to what? In everything, give what? What must we give? Somebody on here. What must we want? So the extreme emphasis on material giving makes some people covetous. And not touching giving at all makes some people poor. So while you are reading scripture, you are guided by that spirit of revelation one knowledge. Bye -bye, bye -bye. Stay here. Me. I believe in speaking in tongues. I believe in healing. I believe in the Holy Ghost. I also believe when you need to pray in understanding, stop praying in tongues. When you need to confess your sin one to another, don't say maskele, skarado, skatata. Oh boy, speak in understanding. What have you done? Okay, in understanding. I sinned, but I need to confess. If anyone seek, let them call for what? So if you don't call for the others and you say they are not asking you in church, that's, they don't even bother to ask. Who is fulfilling scripture? Who is the one breaking scripture? Pastor cannot even call. He didn't even ask you to call pastor. Just call Edda. Allah to Jesus, Father Abraham. Edda, I'm strong. Because if you have to follow Bible, you don't call me. That, that, that doesn't suit you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Without revelation, we make mockery of scriptures. 
Scripture can't be followed raw without revelation. Do you know that? Do you know that? And God led most Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted of what? The best place for your temptation is wilderness. Even one wilderness, well, because Satan can't tempt you in food court, all right? And he can't tempt you at shop right, all right? Where can he tempt you? So any temptation that is not related to wilderness is not from. You know you have issues. <laughs> Glory be to Jesus. And I think the reason why a lot of people that go into Bible school without revelation or that they have problem with God is because there is possibility of tampering with truth because you can turn biblical knowledge to scientific knowledge. Just a sense rule. How many of you are still following me? Whatever you are doing, you can you cannot be stronger than the revelation you carry. So, God must be known, must be understood, must be worshipped, must be obeyed. And even God must also be enjoyed. But the first thing you need to do with God, He must be understood. Why? Because His Spirit. Because His Spirit, He must be understood. And to understand God, it requires what? Revelation. Without revelation, I can't understand who? God. Oh, Lynn. In fact, we are going through arrow of misinterpretation. Arrow of what? I had a dream that somebody stole my car. The following day, we went to do tracking. And the car the Bible is referring to is your first child. How do you know there is a spirit in a man? It is the inspiration that gives your spirit what understand. So without inspiration, your spirit has no word. And that is an advantage to Satan. How, how will you interpret Ka as your first child? Revelation comes in. 